All right, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is your daily huddle. My name is Giovanni Gonzalez, and I am very excited to get us started. My apologies for being a little bit behind the hour or after the hour, had some technical difficulties. Hello, live studio of the daily huddle. I'm just honored to be with you, part of your life. Thank you for plugging in. Thank you for opening up your calendar and making the daily huddle um, a conversation that starts your day. We're certainly committed to give you empowering you into giving you context to have you have a powerful day and uh, enhance and enhance and empower the rest of your life. Today we're having a particular conversation, a very powerful conversation where Sorel and I got together and we said, you know, um, why don't we come together to the daily huddle and uh, just like talk about some of the things that make people um, you know, like give them a boost in their performance and that's partnerships, how to collaborate, how to bring other people to their mission, other people to their vision and have people work together under one vision and when they're under one mission. So today we're going to be in, in engaging in that conversation. What stops people from working together? right and creating a big impact in the world so i'm excited about that so today's on today's daily huddle you're going to have your co-hosts as the guest speaker so i'm super excited and i love to dance with sorel and i have been had a chance to work with sorel for you know on and off for um i don't know 10 years or so i want to say a few things about sorel and then uh, I'm going to let Sorel introduce himself as well. Um, so it, it's a privilege for me to introduce Sorel, right? Given the, the story that we have together, the history that we have together, right? He first was my very first mentor in this technology called transformation. He was my very first one. And, um, and he gave me access to a thing called being responsible. And I'm just not... I'm not saying that as a bumper sticker kind of thing. He actually gave me access to be the opportunity of being responsible for all of it, not just for my life, but for the opportunity that my community is, for the opportunity that conversations are out there. Like, what would that be like to, for me to be responsible? And he gave me the rest of my life, just that possibility. So I'm going to say um, a few things about Sorel in the spirit of... Um, just letting you guys know some of what he does and what he has been up to for many years. So, Sorel Katan is a trusted advisor to CEOs, founders, owners, and other key executives. He is the founder and CEO of ExecuFit, a firm dedicated to empowering leaders to discovering hidden barriers to high performance and create shared plans to build and sustain an environment for high performance. As president also of QM3 Utility Services, Sorel manages the development and deployment of processes and systems to, million, to, to manage millions of field assets for utilities across the Southeast. QM3 employs a diverse workforce with over 50 employees and currently serves clients in the state of Georgia, Virginia, and Tennessee. Sorrell also has an MBA from the Nova Southern University and a bachelor's degree in electrical engineer from the University of Florida. Sorrell is a superstar. And I get to work with him. We worked in Haiti creating teams of high performance. Sorel is the number one executive coach expert. Sorel, good morning. Good morning, Giovanni. Good morning, and thank you so much for that introduction. And uh, I, I get to say, I don't get to say ditto, right? And this, this is what I'm going to say. I am you, you are me. And uh, who you are for me, Giovanni, is not just the guy who was born in Colombia, who lived in Belize and worked at traffic lights selling newspapers before you are who you are now. So you've got the journey and who you are for me is the number one uh, transformational uh, leadership coach. 
And uh, what the world needs to know is that the professionals who work with you and the professionals and entrepreneurs who've worked with you have for the first time in their lives and their careers started to generate six figure and even seven figure incomes. And uh, some of the companies you work with can now boast actually having seven figure profits. That is amazing. Giovanni, I honor you for the work that you do. I honor you for the commitment that you are, not just to uh, entrepreneurs and professionals, but generally to people in your life. Uh, your way of loving and caring has taught me how to collaborate. I love being your teammate and I love being your partner. So today we have the honor and the privilege of sharing with people what keeps us from collaborating and having an impact, the impact we want to have in the world. And uh, I give you the honor to tee it up and go first. Giovanni, what keeps you from collaborating? Yeah, you know, and I love that question, right? And I love for all of you who are listening in, just kind of get closer to the conversation and look for yourself. What keeps you from collaborating with others to create the impact that you're committed to or that you would love to see in the world, right? And so um, I, wanna, I wanna start with a little story that made a difference for the rest of my life in the context of team building, right? In the context of collaborating with others. I was uh, working at the bank at the time. I worked for a major bank uh, right after college. And there was this environment for um, competitiveness and being someone who gets the trophy and, you know, you get mentioned at the end of the quarter. And, you know, there's a competitive environment. And, but I didn't really like that environment. It wasn't, it wasn't fulfilling, giving me access to my self-expression, if you will. But I had to do it, I had to compete, and I had to try to get more clients than anybody else. And the, there's something that started happening that began to build my individuality. And that was, I needed to be better than somebody else. I needed to be recognized a little more than somebody else. When I never really wanted that for myself, it became this thing I was kind of craving, right? But my performance wasn't necessarily elevating. My customer service wasn't necessarily getting better, right? The uh, attrition and the attraction and keeping clients wasn't really necessarily getting better just because I was got gathering, I was trying to get the next client, right? So I didn't like it, but then, um, and, and I wasn't really creating collaboration around me either. However, I saw this quote and sometimes some quotes just make a big difference. And the quote was, what would it be possible in your life if you don't care who gets the credit. And so I saw that beyond numbers. I saw that beyond trying to look good or get recognition. I saw that as a possibility for an impact out there in the world, right? What would it be possible if I didn't care who got the credit? And I started you know, realizing that so many things were possible. Like the impact that I wanted to be to each person that I got in contact with, was just all of a sudden elevated, right? The opportunity of creating team around me, right? Was all of a sudden elevated, mm -hmm. right? The opportunity to create just like collaboration and love and performance was just, it just got elevated if I didn't care because I was listening for what builds other people and what builds the outcome, not what builds me. And that, even though that created a shift, and my looking good chart went down a little bit, my impact just exponentially grew. And it gave me access, Sorrel and everybody else here on the call, it gave me access to begin to see myself as a bridge to performance. And everything shifted. So I wanna start the conversation by saying, when I, I think that when I let go wanting to be recognized and that need to be recognized, then collaboration started happening in a new, new level. I'm even willing to say that that's an addiction for humanity. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to go that far that we crave recognition, right? And that stops the opportunity of being an impact in the world. So I want to start it with that conversation, Sorel. 
thank you. Thank you, Giovanni. I totally get what you're saying. And uh, I want to take uh, you and uh, the listeners back to Haiti with me. I must have been six or seven years old. And I remember this as vividly as, as if it was yesterday. The neighbors would come to the house to visit mom and dad or other family members would come. And Sorel, six to five year old, would turn on the radio and inevitably some good pompa song would be playing and Sorel would break out into this dance. And whenever I broke out into this dance, the neighbors cheered, my mother was proud and, uh, and, and, and the visitors went crazy. It was like I was the center of their attention and uh, no one existed but me. So when I'm looking at collaborating and being a team member in my life today, I see the same kind of uh, strategy to living life in, uh, in action. So when I'm unable to collaborate or I force the, the I force collaborating, who I am is this six or seven year old who, who's screaming, see me, see me. So when I was six, I danced to be seen. When I was six years old, I danced and pranced around to be liked. And uh, when I was six years old, I did all that. So I would be the chosen one. And uh, when I was six years old, I did that so I could be taken care of and rewarded. So I'm sharing this with you so you can connect with me and connect with the human being who's here, who still craves to be seen, who still craves to be liked and admired, who still craves to be the chosen one, and who still wants to be taken care of and uh, rewarded. And when I look at the way I used to be that way with regard to my brothers, it was always in the mind of the six-year-old that I could only be seen, liked, chosen, rewarded, and applauded only if my brother wasn't being liked, chosen, rewarded and admired. So when it comes to collaborating as a businessman, I went to school, I learned what I learned, I became the professional I became, yet in many ways, I was still six years old. I competed hard, I worked hard, I studied hard. I wanted to make money, I wanted to wear the nice clothes, I wanted to drive the nice car. I wanted to marry a beautiful woman <laughs> for no other reason than to be seen, to be liked, to be admired, to be chosen, to be rewarded and taken care of. And uh, every time I get to the place where I'm not really making the impact on the world that I want to make or not having uh, the impact in my family or in my own life. Uh, I, I bet you I look right next to me or right where I'm sitting and who I see and who I get in touch with is that six year old. So it's that way for me. Uh, you never know, maybe it could be that way for you as well. 
so I'm sharing this little brat with you today in the hopes that maybe you get in touch with your own brat. And uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm also seeing for myself is that, you know, my little brat never goes away. I, I never quite uh, get rid of him. And I'm discovering that maybe, just maybe, it's not about getting rid of him. It's uh, more about owning him and taking responsibility for being six years old when I am being six years old. And when I can do that, perhaps something new becomes possible. Something like having a business partner like Giovanni. Something like uh, uh, creating a daily huddle and uh, I'm not the speaker, <laughs> something like that. So uh, I'm six years old and I know it. <laughs> I'm six years old, I admit it. And uh, it is in those moments when I can admit that, that maybe I have the opportunity to collaborate, be a team member that makes a difference and uh, have the impact I wanna have with you and with the rest of the world. Giovanni, thank you for putting up with me. You on mute, brother. Thank you. Yes, what an honor to uh, put up with you. You know, the, 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 you know what the six-year-old gets to do, it's unbelievable, it's beautiful, what you get to do when you're a six-year-old and when you're also an adult. You know, I, I wanted to add something else um, and, and I just really want to thank you for sharing it that way. It was so, it's so open and so transparent, right? It's so, so deep for me to look at how, what's running the show as an adult for my life, you know, when I'm trying to collaborate, right? And the way you set it up for all of us to look at is, you know, when you're trying to, to collaborate, perhaps all of those arguments that you are um, creating around you comes from this unrecognized, very young way of being who's trying to get the attention, right? It's not necessarily that you're committed to an outcome, it's, it, or you're arguing for an outcome, you're actually trying to get the attention, right? So thank you for creating it that way, for all of us to, to be in the inquiry of that. I, I think um, the other thing I wanted to add on that stops people from collaborating and creating an impact um, it's this, there is this global conversation, I, I'm willing to say, I'm willing to stretch it that way, that people wake up in the morning waiting to be taken advantage of. Like somebody today is gonna take advantage of me. And so when collaboration begins to happen or, a, or, a, or an aligned purpose is available for two human beings or for a team of human beings, they're all listening for, well, at what point are you gonna take advantage of me? At what point you're going to get more credit? Or at one point, um, I, I, I'm not going to be uh, recognized or, or in all in the context of being taken advantage of and, and um, you know, in the context of um, what V40 Thin created this, this question um, on, the ta on the chat is that if people can begin to be recognized by their own humanity around being taken advantage of, and if they can put it on the side, then a team is, uh, an authentic team is able to show up. And, um, and so I wanted to add that to everything you said and everything I said, and I'm wondering what's, what's uh, at the, at the, um, on, this, on the live studio, if anybody has a question that's beginning to open up for all of you. Awesome, Giovanni. We've got Mary Pat with her hand up. Mary Pat? This was just wonderful in the sense that I, my six-year-old that I identified had to get it right all the time. But when you're getting it right all the time, guess what you're doing? You're making everyone else wrong. And that is my six-year-old who shows up for me. And I wanted to get the task done, 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 done. So I'm very 
task oriented versus relationship oriented in my past in my right now I'm very relationship oriented and often the tasks don't get done. So I'm caught in that of moving to the other side. But something that I also took on a few years ago and I saw this like Gio, like Gio a quote somewhere and it said, what if you turned your me upside down? And I didn't know what it meant for a while. And if you turn me, the word me, upside down it's we so it becomes community immediately if you turn the me upside down if you just spell out me on a piece of paper turn it upside down it's we so that's what i'm taking on and thank you this was great really great really great just those reminders of that we are still dealing with our six-year-old and how do we deal with it every day Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for creating that. Go ahead, Sorrel. Who else? What are you seeing for yourself? What do you want to create now as your access for collaborating and having an explosive impact on the world around you? I have a question. Go ahead, Adriana, and then Maria Sangria. My question is. When you grew up and you came to USA and have new challenge, what was that collaboration that changed your life at that moment? Who made that change or how that change was done? Uh, Adriana, if I get your question correctly, I'll answer it this way. It wasn't collaboration. It was more competition. Uh, when I first came to the States, uh, I was for myself a little Haitian boy who had to prove himself to my teenage friends around me. And uh, you may notice that I speak English really properly. <laughs> I fought for that. Uh, I fought to be seen by uh, learning English and speaking English as if I was not a Haitian. And, uh, and so uh, I wasn't even collaborating with me in that, uh, in that era of my life. I was uh, hiding me. So I speak English that way to hide the fact that I am from there, to hide the fact that I am different to fight, to be seen, to be recognized. And so um, what, what, what's showing up right now as uh, the, the person I say I am, who uh, lives to make a difference for others, uh, only shows up for me in continually seeing uh, where the six-year-old is. Just so recalcitrant. <laughs> that sucker won't go away. <laughs> and uh, and I have the privilege of living the life of continually seeing him. Thank you for asking that, Adriana. Maria. Thank you, Sorel, and thank you, Giovanni. I uh, noticed this morning that the source of all my transformation is with us, Sheila James. Hi, Sheila. And <laughs> Sheila, thank you for everything that you've provided for me. I grew up with uh, five siblings and my parents, so there were a total of eight of us, and I never got attention. So I was desperately seeking attention. So then as an adult, if I didn't get acknowledged or recognized, I would uh, somewhat throw a temper tantrum or demand it. And Sheila, I give thanks to you in my discovery that I don't need to do that anymore and that now I find my acknowledgement in acknowledging others. And so that has made a huge difference for me. So now when I do collaborate, I'm always all inclusive, including murderers and rapists, and there's no one that I will not be on a team with. So I am always willing 
to include everyone and also be on teams with everyone to always uplift and empower them and be dreams fulfilled so that my dreams come true and their dreams come true. So Sheila, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maria. We have uh, two more questions. Jill, I think we have time for two more. Uh, we'll start with Ronald and then we'll go to Thomas. All right, uh, guys, this is a great, this is a great uh, huddle as always, they're all great. Um, so, uh, I mean, this is just like me listening to myself while you were speaking because uh, we do share that, that, uh, that uh, patriotic, patriotic background, the Haiti background. So, so that was very much a similar story for me. What was there for me was that you were the ugly kid. I, I, I was the ugly kid. So this is the kid with brown nose, thick lips. So so everybody was like picking on me. So so for me, it was like I need to really show them that I am bad, that I am good, that I am smarter, that I have, I can, you know, think in 3D, I can draw, I can, I can dance too, I can sing some days when I want to sing. I want I want to do anything better than you. They did better than anyone around me. So, so that is a very uh, a mirror image of what you went through and what pro propels you. Uh, that was the, that has been the same for me. So right now, and, and Giovanni, you hit it right. There is this morning that you wake up and you're saying that who's going to take advantage of you? And this is really, I mean, I'm, I'm putting it straight up to you guys. This is really where I get stuck. What is, who do I, I go to that I say, okay, here it is. Here is my next steps to, to um, stardom, my next steps to get to that branding, to get to that uh, super, a uh, uh, place that I want to be, but yes, there is the fear of who's going to take advantage of you. So um, that was that was a great question, and and I would say, man, I wake up with this question every morning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's it's uh, I don't know if I put it in terms of a question. Well, uh, but in terms uh, of a comment, I put I posted you know with this I, whole concept of branding now the landscape of branding, how do you, you know, how do you come out of the me to the we, just just like the lady uh, before mentioned. All right, and uh, Ronald, uh, I'm going to pause on responding to that question, so we may have the opportunity to hear two more. So I'm requesting that the next two, Thomas and then Sheila, keep it really concise and brief, because we want the world to hear you. Thomas, you go first. I grew up, it was a very competitive world. I grew up without mom and dad in a state home facility, like a kid's jail. So I know the competitive nature you're talking of. You had, I was a do or die situation every day, every single day. And I knew that I didn't like me. So why would I like anyone else? And if I didn't want them to succeed, it was killing me. So everyone died around me until I realized I was killing me. And the me I was killing was the one in my heart and my soul. It wasn't the outside little kid that never grew up. It was the big kid who took it on as if it was the real thing until I realized what I was doing. I couldn't stop until I saw it, I couldn't stop getting the, what can I say, the attention that craved just being seen and heard because what I got was negative attention and I craved positive attention. And this is something that really helped me to see that I authentically didn't like me. So why would I treat or like anyone any better than I like myself? 
that's an interesting poignant point of view that I need to look at from time to time also. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Sheila. All right. Good morning. Um, mine is real is a question. Um, I mean, I could get into the past, but what I really wanted to know, Sorrell and Gio, in terms of collaborating, I know you're, you know, what do you do on a daily basis to ongoing collaborate and meet new people outside of just leads you already have, people refer, outside of referrals? Because I'm kind of at a ground zero. You know, I've been in a bubble for about 12 years, right? And now I'm not even out in the world given COVID. You get what I'm saying? I got it completely. So that's my question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Gio, I'll take the first uh, pass at it, then you go on, okay? Uh, Sheila, I've discovered this myself. I'm discovering this myself. Mm -hmm. The people I already know are my best leads. So when I don't find anyone new to call, or I have no one new to call, Mm -hmm. I call on my friends, I call on the people I already know, and, uh, and I share with them what I'm up to. And then I say, who do you know that I can share this with? Just like that. Got or it. who do you know that could actually benefit from the difference I want to make? And you'll be surprised, the people in your life probably already know your best clients. Perfect. So best clients aren't too far away. Uh, I'm discovering that. Thank you. And, and, and uh, I, I say this because what will stop me and stop you dead in your tracks is the notion that I have no one to talk to. And in a world where I have no one to talk to, then I don't say. Mm. Yet in a world where I can speak to anyone, even if I'm not speaking to you because you're a prospective client, then I can share. And it expands from there. Perfect. Yeah. Gio. Mm. Okay, I'm going to great great question. I'm going to I'm going to um, I'm going to give this 30,000 view from a strategic standpoint. I, I heard your question a little bit strategic and um, and then we can we can speak off the call to be able to deepen it a little bit. So from a 30,000 view when I one of the ways that is very right now very easy to reach a lot of people and connect with them is that a lot of people are more than ever before really conscious and really aware of what they're suffering and what's missing for them and they even can put language to it right so if you allow yourself to set up kind of a, an open webinar an open set form like this one with a good question like that that solves a problem that a lot of people have or solves a problem that you solve right and then you invite, as, as Sorrell is saying, you invite as many people that you know and as many people you don't know, right? And you'll be, what you'll find is you'll be very surprised how many people want to reach, not because of you, but because of the question that you're saying you can solve, right? And that will open up a whole world for you. And by setting up that conversation in a way where at the end you invite people to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. And, um, and that, that opens up, that opens up everything after that. So I wanted to give it that way. And then after the call, if you want, I can give you more of an insight of, of how to set that up. So I think that's, that's it for us, Sorrel, right? That is it, my friend. We're eight minutes over the half hour mark. And uh, thank you for being available to us. And uh, thank you, world, on Facebook Live for being available to us. Giovanni, thank you for your partnership. And uh, thank you for the lessons and the collaboration that comes on a daily basis. Thank I appreciate you, you. I love all of you. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great bye -bye. day.